Gaffney. We have a quorum of seven present with one absent. If the record would also <coughs> show that, Directors Frega, Cotel, McGallis, Melvin, Pang, Triani, and Chairman Dillard are also <coughs> present. All right, the first item is approval of the minutes from the meeting held on February 15th, 2018. Are there any questions or comments on those minutes? If not, uh, is there a motion and a second to approve the minutes as submitted? So moved. Any volunteers? <coughs> moved by Director Lewis, seconded by Director Ross. Will the secretary please call the roll on that issue? Director Anderson? Yes. Director Colson? Yes. Director DeWitt? Yes. Director Fuentes? Yes. Director Higgins? Aye. Director Lewis? Yes. Director <coughs> Ross? Yes. Seven ayes and one absent. All right, the first item is uh, items 3A and 3B, which will be taken together. Uh, it's an ordinance approving the combining financial report and certifying compliance with the RTA Act recovery ratio requirement for 2017 and an ordinance approving and releasing the RTA 2017 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, or CAFR. Uh, who would be presenting? B? Yes, I will, I will start it off. Thank you, Director. Um, as you said, the first ordinance approves the 2017 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, which we refer to as the CAFR. The CAFR covers only the RTA reporting entity. The RTA Act and our board and our bond covenants require an audit of the Comprehensive Annual Report. We have with us today representatives from our audit firm, RSM, to cover the topics required by audit standards. The second ordinance approves the 2017 Combining Financial Report. This report represents a compilation of the financial results of the RTA and the service boards. The RTA Act requires this report in order to provide an overall financial picture of the entire RTA system. Our external auditors do not audit these financial statements, but they do review the compilation. Each service board's auditors issued an unqualified opinion of the service board's 2017 financial statements. The ordinance certifies that based on a final audited results, the RTA system achieved a 51.22% recovery ratio for region-wide mainline service and 10% for regional ADA paratransit service. In addition, given the importance of meeting this RTA Act requirement, we have requested that the top financial officials of the CTA Metro and PACE certify the figures they provided to us to calculate the region-wide recovery ratio. I am pleased to report that we have received this certification from all three service boards. Based on this information, this ordinance finds the system's recovery ratio in compliance with the RTA Act. I want to take this opportunity to thank John Yu and his uh, controller's office staff for the hard work they have put in to completing this annual audit and the financial statements. Now I would like to turn it over to our external auditor. Joe Evans is a senior partner with RSM and the lead partner on the R RTA audit. RSM is the fifth largest CPA firm in the nation and has a specialty serving governments like the RTA. Joe Evans has over 30 years experience performing audits of governmental entities and has significant experience with all aspects of governmental operations. Joe? Thank, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, also here with me is Hilda Renteria. Uh, Hilda is the uh, one of the founding partners of Prado and Renteria. They are our uh, minority partner uh, that works with us. We have a DBE goal of 15% and uh, working together with Prado and Renteria, we met that goal. Uh, the areas that they worked on uh, included the uh, single audit and uh, other testing, compliance testing. Uh, and when we get to that section, uh, I'll have Hilda uh, talk about their work. <coughs> On page two of the presentation, the scope of services includes the RTA Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, uh, uh, more commonly referred to as the CAFR, the combining financial statements. This is the statutory basis report that includes the RTA and the service boards, the joint self-insurance fund, uh, the pension plan, uh, including the allocation report of the net pension liability between the participants, RTA, Metro, and PACE, and uh, finally the single audit, which is conducted in accordance with uniform guidance. I'm going to cover with you the required communications that we as auditors have to have with boards. Uh, the first thing, the most important, is all of the opinions that were issued were unmodified. This is a clean opinion, means you've met all of the appropriate standards. 
Uh, this covers the CAFR, the Joint Self-Insurance Fund, and the Pension Plan. Um, one thing we're required to point out is there are significant judgments and accounting estimates included in the financial statements. This includes the fair value of investments, net pension liability, and other post-employment benefits. This is a normal part of preparing financial statements. We're required to uh, provide these estimates and uh, they're covered as part of the audit process. <coughs> Continuing on with the required uh, communications, we had no disagreements with management. We had no consultations with other accountants. There were no major issues discussed prior to our retention, no alternative or unusual accounting treatments, and no audit adjustments. <clears throat> The CAFR also includes management's discussion and analysis and required supplementary information. <clears throat> this is information that's required by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, but it's not required to be audited. Other information we receive from management includes the management representation letter, which is a signed certification provided to us by management that they have fully discharged their responsibilities and responded to all of our questions. We had full cooperation from the entire management team and access to the entire organization. I'd like to cover a few financial statement highlights. First off, the CAFR, the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, has received the GFOA Certificate of Achievement for the 23rd straight year. The Certificate of Achievement is a prestigious award that the Government Finance Officers Association provides to various governments for meeting certain criteria, and uh, so congratulations uh, for meeting that. And we believe the current year report, once it's submitted, uh, will also meet the qualifications. As far as the general fund is concerned, revenues were under budget by about $20 million, and this is primarily due to sales tax receipts. Uh, which were $8 million under budget. Uh, this includes the implementation of the state's 2% sales tax surcharge and uh, regional economic conditions that were lower than anticipated. PTF receipts were also $20 million under budget due to the 10% reduction in the state's stopgap budget. Investment income was over budget by $4 million, so a positive uh, result there, and $4 million of sales tax uh, was uh, received from a tax settlement, uh, so that was also a positive adjustment. Because of the lower than expected revenues, the RTA and service boards adopted reduced funding levels in August 2017 and collaborated to control expenses, so that total expenses were also 19 million under budget. After the issuance of the financial statements, there were two debt issues. Uh, this is the working cash note of $150 million and the GO capital bonds for $139 million. The special purpose combining financial statements uh, are the uh, statutory based financial statements that are required to be submitted to the state. Uh, as B mentioned, each service board submits to us their audited financial statements and then they're combined uh, in one single report. And this report is used to um, determine the region-wide recovery ratio, uh, which was met at 51.2%. Uh, also, the region-wide ADA paratransit recovery ratio was met. Each individual service board certified to us their recovery ratios. The Joint Self-Insurance Fund has net position or, or net equity, if you will, of $25.2 million. During the year, the RTA distributed $4.1 million to the general, uh, from the general fund uh, toward the insurance premiums, uh, which were $5.2 million. The RTA pension plan, which includes the non-unit employees of RTA, Pace, and Metra, had combined employer contributions of $11.9 million. Investments had a market value gain of $40.8 million in 2017 compared to a gain of $20 million in the previous year. So very good uh, results. 
Uh, at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Hilda to talk about the single audit. Thank you, Joe. Um, Prado and Renteria perform uh, single audit testing procedures. A single audit is a compliance audit of expenditures of federal awards. Uh, the RTA reported a total of federal expenditures of 8.3 million for fiscal year 2017 across four federal programs. Those programs were the Federal Transit Formula Grant at 4.4 million, the uh, Transit Services Program at 3.4 million, the Highway and Planning Construction Program at 245,000, the Unified Work Program at 208,000. Uh, we tested the Federal Transit Formula Grants as a Type A program and um, based on the results of our testing, there were no instances of non-compliance noted. Thank you. No material weaknesses or significant deficiencies were noted during the fiscal year 2017 audit. To summarize, there were no audit adjustments, audit reports all received unmodified or clean opinions, no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies, and we were completed on time and on budget. So a very, very good audit. I'd be happy to take any questions at this time. Yeah, uh, Director uh, Melvin. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Sounds like a great, clean audit. Really nice, and it's, it's beautiful. Um, a couple of questions here, uh, and this may not even be uh, part of your purview. Uh, on page eight, you mentioned the insurance fund and the pension fund. Is it your job to tell us if they're properly funded or not, or is that another area that would speak to that? Um, I should speak to that. Um, but, um, you know, we, we have a, a well-funded pension. The estimate is 94 um, percent. Uh, on the joint self-insurance fund, that is also uh, well-funded. Uh, we pay the premiums every every year, and um, they're both um, funded. But if there is an opinion, uh, Joe, you may. No, we we just certify the numbers. We don't report on how well it's funded. Understood. Thank you very much, and congratulations. And I would just say, in a in a year of declining ridership and revenues down, to have a recovery ratio of fifty one point two two is an improvement over last year, even, which is a remarkable achievement. And I would also point out that ADA Paratransit, which always reports a 10% recovery ratio, in fact, if, you crunch, if they crunch the numbers, it's 12.95% if they took all the full credits. So that's an evidence of a very healthy uh, ADA Paratransit program. So thank you. There are no other questions? Any? Okay, then I would, uh, is there a motion and a second to approve these two items as submitted? Move my director, Lewis. Seconded by Director DeWitt. Please take a roll call. Director Anderson? Yes. Director Colson? Yes. Director DeWitt? Yes. Director Fuentes? Aye. Director Higgins? Aye. Director Lewis? Yes. Director Ross? Yes. Seven ayes and one absent. <clears throat> there is no further business to come before the committee. Uh, I would entertain a motion to, and a second to adjourn. I have a motion. Moved by Director Higgins, seconded by Director Anderson. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And we stand adjourned. Wow, moving right along. Sure are. Get out here early. Good morning, everyone. I will call this uh, June 21st, 2018 meeting of the Regional Transportation Authority to order. And uh, let's uh, begin as we usually do with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. 